Welcome back to Discovering Needs, an e-learning course brought to you by the Open Learning Campus at the World Bank Group. In lecture one of the course, we talked about what are needs and what are needs assessments. In lecture two, we will now turn our attention to how do we design a successful needs assessment within our organization. To help guide our discussion, I'll propose a five-step process model of how we can manage our needs assessments. So first, we can define what is the scope of the assessment that we're undertaking. Then we design the assessment and what questions it will answer, followed by developing the necessary tools in order to complete the assessment. In the fourth step, we actually do the assessing. And in the final step, we document what we've learned. Following this approach, in this lecture, we will focus on the define and design steps of managing our needs assessments. It's important to remember that a needs assessment is not about telling people what their needs are. Rather, a needs assessment is a process for helping people better understand their needs so they can set priorities and make better decisions about what to do going forward. Needs assessments can influence the decisions that people make in several different ways. One useful way for thinking about the different roles of a needs assessment is to think about the different decision-making styles that get applied within most any decision. So at times, we think like the rational actor coming out of economic theory where we make decisions based on objective data about what will give us the best results. At other times, we think more like the quasi-rational actor. Coming out of psychology and behavioral economics, we know that people don't always make rational decisions. Sometimes they make irrational decisions. And now we also know that there's also another type of actor that we can think about as we describe our decision making, and that's the enculturated actor. And that comes out of sociology and anthropology research. And it shows how the communities and societies we live in shape our decision making as well. And needs assessments can provide input to decisions from all three of these perspectives. They provide objective data for the rational actor. They also provide information from a variety of stakeholders and their perceptions, which can inform us as our quasi-rational actor. And of course, it looks at levels of results, as we saw in Juan's example, where we tie things to our community and society, which can inform our enculturated actor perspectives in our decisions. A very useful tool in designing a needs assessment is a results framework or logic model. Sometimes these are also called theories of change. If you're not familiar with them, they have a very basic structure. There are typically impacts, and these are the broad societal results that we're trying to have impact on through the work that we do. There are also then outcomes and those are the results that come out of our organizations and institutions. They typically have broader impacts in terms of the number of people that they reach, and they typically relate to behavior changes. There are also then outputs, and these are the direct results of the things that we do within our institutions. So if you're a learning designer, an output could be a delivered training course. The outcome would then be that people have the knowledge and skills to do the jobs that they've been hired to do. And the impact would be whatever value that your organization is adding to the society and community in which it works. These are three levels of results that we typically talk about. And these levels of results are supported by the activities, the things that you do in your organization and the inputs, the resources, and other tools that you have at your disposal in order to do the things that you do. 
We can then use a needs assessment process to help us plan how this system fits together. So what are the impacts that we want to accomplish? In order to accomplish those, what outcomes do we have to accomplish? In order to get those outcomes, what outputs do we have to accomplish? And then, of course, what activities will accomplish those and what resources are necessary to support those activities? This is a general results framework or logic model approach to understanding what's going on within any organization, project, or program. Needs assessments can then be paired with monitoring and evaluation, where we go back the other direction and we ask ourselves questions, such as, did we get the resources we thought we would get? Were we able to implement the activities as we designed them to be implemented? And did those activities lead us to the outputs we expected? And did those outputs also contribute to the outcomes that we had hoped for? And then at the top, we would ask, did those outcomes actually lead to the long-term societal impacts that we had hoped for as an institution or organization? This is, provides a very valuable framework for not only understanding what's going on within your organization, but then also how do we do a needs assessment? Because now we know how we can define the relationships between what we do those activities that we're implementing on a daily basis within our jobs and within our work, and what are the results that are supposed to come from those activities. When we then look at this in terms of a needs assessment, we can see that each of these levels actually has two different components to it. We have what are the results that we are currently accomplishing, and we have what are the results that we want to accomplish going forward. This provides us then with the gaps that we defined as needs. So we can see that we will have gaps in the impacts, gaps in the outcomes, and gaps in the outputs between what it is we sh are accomplishing and what it is we should be accomplishing. And therefore, we have many needs in any needs assessment and they're related to each other, just as outputs are related to outcomes and outcomes are related to impacts. With this perspective in mind, we no longer start with, we need a project on, or we need a new course on, or they need a new attitude about. Rather than being prescriptive, we're starting to look at what are the gaps and results? How do they relate to each other? How can we prioritize those? And then how can we come up with sensible solutions that will help address those results? And we do this typically within three phases of a needs assessment. So in the first phase, we identify the needs. We identify those gaps and results. In the second phase, we analyze those needs to see why they're happening. Why are we not getting the results that we wanted to get? If we think back to Juan's example from lecture one, we would want to know why are staff not completing accurately the intake forms of patients? This would be how we could analyze the need that is identified. And then in the third phase, we define and decide what it is that should be done in order to close those gaps and results going forward. Sometimes we will be the ones who get to make the decisions Many times, we're just providing recommendations to others who will make the decisions about what should be done going forward. In phase one, we can then start to see a needs assessment framework taking shape, where we have these gaps and results across our results chain or our results framework. We could have three levels of gaps and results. And then there are also gaps in the activities and the resources that support those accomplishments and those results as we go forward. To give an example, as we identify gaps and results, we could be looking to see whether or not result B is being accomplished. And we know that from our definition of need, it must be necessary in order to achieve another result. And again, we'll call that result C. So if we think of Rose's example from lecture one, 
Rose had a gap in results between her current teamwork levels of productivity and the desired levels of team productivity going forward. And she wanted that in order to achieve delivered health services to her clients and meeting client demand. And those are also a current level and a desired level going forward. Similarly, we can then put those in relation to other results that must be accomplished within our organization. So as we discussed in lecture one, needs are related on several levels and A might require results B in order to get result C and they have to get result C in order to get result D. So in this case, now we can see that again we have this gap in delivered health services and we want to close that gap in results in order to get improved health. So we have one gap in results in order to close another gap in results. And we can look at this across our whole continuum of our results framework. In looking back at Juan's example, we can see that there were gaps at the community level where they have new residents coming in that require medical services. There were also gaps at the organizational level, gaps between the current annual revenue and the desired annual revenue and the budget shortfalls that come along with that. And then there were gaps at the level where Juan and his staff work, the number of incomplete or inaccurate forms, the number of current patients being seen within a, current, within a given shift, as opposed to the desired levels of those. Each of those gaps represents a need, and each of those needs can then be analyzed and solutions can be identified that will address those needs going forward. Let's take a break here and do a self-reflection activity. You can pause the video, and what I'll ask you to do is write down a simple statement. It will start with a blank in order to blank. And I want you to start with the second blank. And here, I want you to write down a gap in results that your organization would like to close. And then in the first blank, I want you to write down another gap in results. And in this case, it's a gap in results that must be closed in order to achieve the second gap in results that you've already identified. So for example, the gap in results for the organization might be to decrease the time required for new staff to learn how to do their jobs from six months down to two months. So we have a four month gap in results that we would like to close as an institution. In the first gap then, we might write down that we have to move from 30% to 90% of new staff can identify their primary job responsibilities within two weeks of starting the job. So we have now a second gap in results that we would like to close. And it's that relationship that is going to be critical. So please write this down for your organization and reflect on what is that relationship between the two gaps in results you've identified. 